This video covers the task word analysis. If this word is misunderstood in an exam, it can lead to candidates providing answers that do not address the requirements of the question. The purpose of this video is to enable candidates to understand the analysis task word and to provide guidance on how to undertake analysis in a math exam. Note that there are a number of different definitions of the analysis task word. For example, the University of New South Wales describes analysis as to break an issue down into its component parts, discuss them and show how they interrelate. Whilst the University of Melbourne describes analysis to examine something carefully to discover meaning, key features, etc. And the Victoria University of Wellington's definition is to take a part, describe the different parts of the subject, how they interrelate and contribute to the whole. And finally, the definition from Bloom's taxonomy is to examine and break information into parts by identifying motives or causes, make inference, inferences, and find evidence to support generalizations. So whilst there is a similar theme running through all the definitions, we need to be aware that we all may have a slightly different understanding of the analysis task word to the one used in the CA program. So this is the definition of the analysis task word that should be used when answering any math exam question. Let's take the analogy of a doctor treating a patient in order to explain the analysis task word. The first step would be to identify the patient's symptoms and understand how they relate to each other. Identify any trends, linkages, and cause-effect relationships, perhaps how the symptoms may have changed over time, etc. The better the analysis, the more likely it is that the patient's condition can then be correctly diagnosed and a treatment plan developed. It is good to be aware of what does not constitute analysis. Restating background or financial information that has already been made available in a question is not analysis. Providing a summary of issues that are included in a question is also not analysis. Following what others are doing normally means making decisions without taking into account all the relevant factors. To be independent thinkers, it is important to analyze relevant factors, then base any decision on the analysis of these factors. Determining the value of something based on specific criteria, this would be regarded as evaluation, which is a different task word, which will be covered in a separate video. Providing business advice is a different task word. Therefore, if a question requires that the financial performance of a business is analyzed, then advice as to how the financial performance can be improved does not need to be provided. The focus should be identifying the drivers of the financial performance. What is the point of analysis? It enables a person to become a better thinker as they take into account all the relevant factors before coming to a conclusion or making a decision. Effective analysis reduces the risk of jumping to conclusions, for example, making a key investment decision without taking into account all the relevant factors. Analysis provides a basis for better strategic planning and budgeting and increases the ability to understand the underlying drivers of financial performance. Analysis also enables the identification of trends and interrelationships in data. In order to become effective business partners, accountants need to be skilled in analyzing data in order to provide value-added insights. Analysis is a skill that is developed over time. A good way to develop the skill is to answer analysis type questions. The difference between actually answering an analysis question before looking at the answer and just reviewing the question and answer could be compared to the difference between actually playing a game of tennis and being a spectator at the game. Skills are developed by, are developed by playing tennis and obtaining feedback. Similarly, analysis skills can be developed by answering analysis type questions and then obtaining feedback by, for example, comparing your answer to the solutions provided. Make sure that you understand the various sources of information that are available. Identify any trends, linkages, or causation. Answers to an analysis question need to be factually correct. So if it is stated that the selling price has been reduced, and then an answer provided states that the gross margin has reduced as a result of more expensive raw materials, this could be regarded as factually incorrect. Any points of analysis need to be relevant to a question, and we should not be adding new information that is not provided in the question. Also be aware of causation versus correlation. A quick note on correlation versus causation. Correlation is a statistic that measures the degree to which two variables move in relation to each other. Perfect correlation would be measured as one, 
whereas no correlation would be a zero. Now let's take uh, let's say that there's a strong correlation between ice cream consumption and the level of swimming pool usage. Now the question to ask is whether the ice cream consumption causes swimming pool usage or vice versa. And the answer is neither. Even though there's a strong correlation, one variable does not cause the other to change. The, whilst there's strong correlation, there's little causation. The cause of changes in both these variables is, is actually the outside temperature. There is therefore causation between the temperature and each of these individual variables. So when analyzing financial performance, it is important to identify causation between the various variables as it is this that will enable the identification of the drivers of financial performance. Remember that analysis extends beyond financial information. We need to consider factors within the industry in which a business operates. We need to understand the strategies of, uh, that the organization pursues. And we need to take into account other relevant issues such as actual business operations, changing customer needs, actions by competitors, etc. Let's look at a business example. Analysis continually takes place in businesses. Whilst Uber started with an idea and has disrupted the taxi industry, a key success factor is that it undertakes detailed analysis when identifying markets to move into. So when moving into a new market, Uber would consider how well served is a community with public transport and taxi cabs. Do current competitors offer primarily low quality and unresponsive service with respect to customer needs? Uh, what's the current attitude of regulatory authority agencies to alternative transport options? And does the new market location have affordable high-speed mobile coverage for customers to contact Uber drivers? And in relation to this last point, I'll show you an example of some simple analysis which could be undertaken. We could make use of analytics to look at um, high-speed mobile coverage. For example, Tableau offers some uh, freely available public data. If we were looking for a country with a high population, what we could do is look at where, where the high population is. Look, looks like India and China, both in Asia. So if we target Asia and we look at mobile phone usage, and we start with India. Let's say it's 2009 and the current cell phone subscription rate is 44%. And let's say this is just a forecast. And let's say by 2012, the expected subscription rate is expected to be 70%. Now let's look at China. In 2009, the cell phone subscription rate in China is expected is 55%, and let's say it's predicted to go up to 81% in 2012. We can now take this data and do a comparison. If this was the da actual data, then we'd probably say go, all other factors being equal, we would probably um, target China. Bear in mind, this is just a hypothetical example. We'd also expect to see analysis in annual reports. This is an extract from the commentary section of the financial results of a recent annual report of a listed company. There was no accompanying comment linking the profit to the organization's strategy, operations, or industry conditions. Similarly, this point from a different annual report would not be considered analysis as it is effectively stating what is already reflected in the income statement. And this point states that our cash investment in projects, asset replacement, and acquisition was X million. And again, this is restating information which is available and no linkage has been made to the purpose of the investment, how it links to the business strategy, etc. And finally, in this example, EBIT has decreased by over 10% and no reasons were provided in the commentary of the financial results. Effective analysis would have outlined the main causes of this decrease. This extract from Kathmandu's 2017 annual report reflects good analysis. Linking the reduction in operating expenses as a percentage of sales to operating efficiencies such as optimizing retail labor and targeting advertising expenditure towards promotional periods and increasing spending mix towards more effective digital channels are good examples of analysis because they are providing reasons from the operations of the, of the business to the actual financial performance. Similarly, linking the increased rental cost to the new office in Christchurch and new distribution centre in Melbourne are examples of good analysis as good connections are being made between the financial results and their drivers. Linkages have been made here between actual financial costs and, it, and their drivers, which, which are the levels of debt and interest rates. And the decreased inventory levels have been linked to the investment in demand planning software. This is an example of good analysis because linkages have been made between current achievements and business strategy. This is more effective than covering organizational strategy in isolation separately in the annual report 
and then commenting separately on actual results with little linkages made between the two. This slide will reflect what the requirement in, in an analysis type question could look like. Note that no background information has been provided. The question focuses on analyzing a budget and then creating connections between the draft budget and historical performance, market information, guidance provided from the chief executive, and segment information. All these would be provided in a question. Now assume that these three factors are included in an analysis type question. The draft budget is showing a decline in revenue from prior year actuals in terms of the market, there's competitive pressure impacting the business and the business's strategy is to develop growth and profitability by opening new stores. Three separate bits of information provided in the question. And an example of an answer could be the decline in the budget revenue of X percent when compared to the prior year actual appears to reflect the competitive pressure the company is now facing. However, the draft budget does not align with the aim to deliver growth. So linkages have been made between the three factors. In this answer, design and development costs in the budget have been linked to the chief executive's directives and the point has been made that they are inconsistent. Note that in some cases, it may be possible to highlight in, an inconsistency between two issues, but it may not be possible to draw a conclusion. Let's cover some key points when, when answering an analysis question. Just be familiar or be aware of the definition. Examine closely, examine something in terms of its parts and show how they are related to each other. So become familiar that with the information that has been made available. Identify trends, linkages and causation. Determine what aspects align and don't align. Ensure all key areas are covered. So for example, when analyzing financial performance, ensure that revenue, COGS and any material expenses are covered. That's all for now on analysis. I hope you found this useful. Thank you.